Radio, to me, was like a chance to kind of lie. It's just so perfect for lying. You could say anything and be anything. And that's what was so magical. And I think this connects to that line from Oscar Wilde. When you ask a man to speak the truth, he'll lie. But if you give him a mask, he'll be more inclined to be honest. So I think like sometimes you can create a context that is fabricated, but what emerges out of that can be quite real. Wiretap is basically uh, a collection of my radio monologues and telephone conversations with uh, my friends and family. And you might say it's a comedy, but kind of a sad, dark one. I was reading it. It was very, very fascinating. I moved the wrong what? way. It how, fell. How do you... Ipso facto, facto, ipso. I flush it, passport down the toilet. So, but that's the, that's the game. Now it's your turn. You brought me out onto the open seas to tell me that I don't have a passport? Partly. But to That's have a good time, too. That's why you did this. No, to have a That's good time, too. That's why you did this. There was no, no confession. I want to spend time There's together. There's no game called Confessions. There is a game called Confessions now. In the beginning, I had to figure out a way to do a radio show each week that was manageable. So fiction became a part of the equation for me, not out of initially any kind of um, philosophical bent, but more just out of necessity, like where I would have the beginnings of a story from a friend and then uh, no end. So I'd say, man, like I, could, I can't waste the time that we just spent you know, hearing all that beginning, let's try out a couple possible endings and maybe construct something in the editing. And I just was using people that I was comfortable with, which were mainly my old friends and my parents and family and stuff like that. I'm fond of quoting that line that Pablo Picasso said, which, is, which was something like, art is a lie that allows us to access the truth. Last season I did a monologue that I almost didn't air. It was fiction, but it had a lot of very real feelings for me about a woman from my, from my past, from high school, reappearing in my life. And, uh, and the feedback was, it was so gratifying because it, I think it, people really connected with it. Why did you care so much about that, she asks, about making me laugh? I don't know what to tell her that maybe it's why I went into radio in the first place, to talk to her, make her laugh, in her laundry room, picking up takeout in her car. Instead, I shrug, and we continue eating in silence. I don't know if this is gonna make sense, but I've described radio in some ways as like building a Trojan horse, where the Trojan horse is the story, but what you pack in there are these parts of yourself that you're trying to put out into the world to somehow make normal almost, to normalize. Like, I think my favorite ones might be the ones where I put out my darkest thoughts, my biggest fears, and I try to figure out a way to make them relatable as best I can so that I don't feel as alone. and. Maybe the people who feel that way, too, won't feel as alone. You create this stuff to make your peace with your weird self. Perfect. That was great. Um, I was going to take off my glasses. I just... <laughs> you were going to take off the glasses? I was not going to have my glasses, yeah, I thought. And then I just caught sight okay. of myself. And from I was the like, top, oh, from the top. Can we do this again? Can you, you could just do this in post, right? I think so, Put yeah. liquid paper over the yeah, frame. Yeah, exactly, yeah. 
I think that this is a golden age of romantic radio. Radio that is based in bringing the listener up close and personal. It's surprising even to the person who's telling it. You know, it's surprising even to the person who lived it. Those moments I really love.